Oh, playoff media. Oh, look at this. What's up, guys? Yes, how you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I just haven't seen you since it happened, so you definitely can. Um, your name has been floated around in Vegas even around the league. I know your concentration is winning this playoff game that's ahead of you. I think there has been a great respect for what you have been able to do with the defense that a lot of people consider to be young and integrating them with some veteran players like Aaron Donald. What, if you could take 30 seconds to reflect, what are you most proud of before, with this defense before you head into this playoff game? This is like an interview question. No, um, really, it's, it's, it's really less about me. It's more about being proud of um, the group in, in, in total. You know, our coaching staff and what we went through and what we did, um, what we set out to do and what you say you do when you go out and do it, it's a big deal. And um, you got to start with Sean right up top from the leadership and how we went about our process, how we reset, hit the reset button and talked about how we want to go about the process. And then to be able to go out and accomplish those things, I think it's a big deal for all of us. I think it's for our younger coaches. I think it's for myself as well. And then I think the steady leadership that I was able to provide and present, I, I'm really proud of that from a selfish standpoint. But when you're talking about the guys, um, I, I told those guys, man, I love this group. I love what this group's been able to accomplish. I love what this group's been able to do. And they're not done yet. Um, and, and I love what we got in store. And I, I love the opportunity we got this weekend. I asked Aaron if through 17 games, this defense is almost not a young defense anymore. Uh, what's your take on that? You grow up as the season goes, right? You've got a bunch of rookies out there when you start. They all hit that rookie wall. They get to that point. They find a way to fight through it. We've seen BY fight through it, find out what real injury is in the NFL, find out how to play through it. Then you watch them come on at the end. You, you watch this process every single year. So whether you're talking about a team that's getting better and this constant improvement, uh, that's one of the things that we continually want to do around here. That's one of those things we would continually want to do just throughout the process. And you've watched this team get better. You've watched this team have setbacks. And the things that make us great is when you have those setbacks and you're able to continue on and find ways to keep winning. And I think that's what's been a lot of fun for these guys, a lot of fun for Aaron. And this team is still young, but they've uh, seasoned a little bit and it's, and it's feeling good for those guys and they're getting a little bit more comfortable. Obviously, uh... Doesn't matter. Go ahead, guys. I'll be here for a while. With that, with, with that, how do you prepare some of the younger guys for not only an explosive and balanced offense, but going into a cold and hostile environment? That is awesome. You know, um, that's what we like. We talked about being a villain this week. You know, young Aubrey Pleasant. You know, he can he can tell you about it. He thought him what talked about who's your favorite villain and taking on that form when you go into it. You know, mine's with Scarface. A couple guys pick Batman, the Joker. I mean, excuse me, the Joker and some of those type of guys, but. It is a cool thing, man, the playoffs and going into hostile environments. And you really love that, right? No, no better feeling in sports than to go in there and being, you know, the Dark Vader to somebody's Star Wars. You know, it is, it is a real cool feeling. Who started that the general talk? Was that you? Was that someone else? It kind of was established throughout the process of the week, you know, when you talk about the games and how you want to play and what the temperament was going to be like. And then it spurred a moment, it spurred a moment for Aubrey Pleasant. And he said, he went around the room and said, man, who's your favorite villain? And, uh, we're going to take that villain mentality and go to Detroit. Who's your favorite villain? I told you, mine was Scarface. <laughs> so you didn't really see the generational divide. Here's a Scarface. And you know, no you question. Know. <laughs> you know, so if you want that Heath Ledger Batman, a new guy that played Batman, I didn't get a chance to watch yet. Excited about that. So Jared Goff accomplished a lot of great things when he, he was in Los Angeles. But both uh, Aaron Donald and Sean McVay both said he's grown, he's gotten better. When you study him as a guy when he has time, how has he grown? You know, um, it'd be hard for me to compare what he was when he was here because I wasn't. Just going against him maybe one time, and I think I was coaching offense, but I watched him. I watched you guys have a bunch of success from afar. You know, me and Sean just had to become friends in 21, right? So I was always been a big Jared Goff fan just watching him play, doing, watching him mature, throwing the keepers, being to go through the process in the play action game. But watching him right now, he's leading a franchise, and he's bought a franchise back that really was on the down slope. And you got to give him and Dan Campbell and that leadership group, that ownership group, a lot of credit for what they've been able to do over the last couple of years. And, you know, he's given us great sound bites. You know, I'm watching my kneecaps. Um, <laughs> they've done a lot of really good things and they, they, they spew toughness. And it's really what really most good coaches are about. And Jared has been able to display that since he's been there. The mental toughness, the ability to bring people up. And you've seen the emotion come out of him at the end of a couple of those games. So... I really just watched him mature and develop in his game, going from a rookie season, being a very high pick, 
um, taking one franchise to a Super Bowl and then going to another one and really lifting them up and making them to a different level. And it's pretty cool for him and his family. Is it fair to say one of the keys to this game is getting pressure on him? Uh, that is fair to say. And that would be fair to say almost every single week. But uh, particularly this week, if you can get pressure on him and really bother him and frustrate him a little bit, um, that gives us a better chance for success. Uh, two question, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, the report out there is that uh, Falcons, Chargers, Commanders, and Panthers have all requested you for head coaching interviews. Yes. Can you confirm that first of all? Those are the ones that I've heard from Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, those are the ones that I know about. Second, how do you handle You've been through this before, I know. But yes. how do you handle that with a young group? This is a lot of their first time going through that understanding on the outside of what you know, your life could look like in a couple of months. And, and so what, how do you handle that with this group? I think um, as you go through this, this profession, um, the people that request you for these, these moments, they, they respect winning more than they respect anything. So I think their expectations for me is to just present my best self when I talk to those guys and really just be authentic. So, like, the pressure is really not on me. You know, the pressure is really not on anybody that I work with or anybody that goes across this business. It's really just, I'm gonna do what I do best in order to provide my best information for those guys when I get to that point. And I'm at, not at that point yet. I'm uh, still focusing on Detroit. I'm worried about trying to go out here and get a victory for the LA Rams. And I really believe I'll handle that when that time comes and is, and is there because Raheem Morris in the third person speaking, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be the same person anyway. So I gotta go give them my best self and my best version is required. How different, are, how different are the, with these new interview rules, um, does that take pressure off of this week for you, knowing that you have to wait two weeks to do these interviews? Really doesn't factor in. You know, um, it wouldn't have mattered whether I had two weeks or three weeks, and I was, if I was in the playoffs, I wouldn't be preparing any differently. I'm preparing for Detroit and getting ready for a really good opponent, going out there and play those guys. And if you, you, you take this for granted, um, you, you don't have the opportunity to go to playoffs a, a bunch. You know, Aubrey Pleasant again, had a great glue, and he talked about some of the great players in this game who've never been in the playoffs. And let's not take that for granted. And it's no different for coaches. How, how much does not having Sam Laporta for them, do you think, change the offense? Are you telling me he's out? <laughs> I, I don't know, but uh, it didn't look good, right? You saw <laughs> We didn't get the official report, but Sam is a great player. I mean, he is coming to this league and taking it by storm, you know, a la Puka. And, um, what they've done is, is, is unique, and he is definitely a tough matchup. And until you tell me he's out, I'm going to prepare for him like he's going to go and be his, his, his same special self. Uh, oh, okay. no, I just wanted to this uh, is ask, nice ask of you Aaron guys. the same question. Um, your scouting report on their offensive line, how they've really hmm. built that thing from the trench outward. It, it, it looks like their head coach. Tough, physical, um, built from the trenches. They got some special players up there. Um, they got some guys that play with some unique toughness. Um, I really like this group. Um, Aaron probably offered, answered a little tougher. You know, I'm, I'm going to talk about a schematic scene and people that you would want with you and your team, and they all fit the bill. They're they're a really good group. Um, you mentioned Aubrey a lot. Obviously, the history of the Lions. There. Sure. Um, I don't know if this is in. Is it personal at all to help him to get, to, to get a W or how much does his knowledge of that franchise and that you know, leadership team help you guys? It's not that. It's, 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 we don't ride the emotional roller coaster. And uh, this is one of those emotional roller coaster games, right? Obviously, Arby spent some time there and got a lot of respect from people there, and he has a lot of respect for people there as well. Um, but, but make no secret about it. You know, he wants to get his win because it's the next opponent we have. Um, it is a little, be a little more special to be in Detroit, but he wants to get his win uh, because of the next opponent there. And we don't ride the emotional roller coaster, and we go about our business every single week. We go through our process. And um, I mentioned him because he had some great things to say to the team this week. He had some great things to say to the teams during the course of this year, um, like all our other coaches. Just so happens the two questions I got posed happen to be two ones that we talked about based on Aubrey. Uh, two part. Question: as, as much as you guys, <laughs> yeah, because I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is media one hundred and one right here. Hey, I, we only have one question, but it's a two-part question. I love this. <laughs> I love it. 
as, as much as you watch Jared through this season, and you weren't here when, when he was here, do you go back and watch like Miami from a few years ago and, and some of the teams that were really effective at um, bringing pressure? So that, that's, that's the game that really was a bad game for Jared, right? And we all know about it. It's well documented. I'm sure Jared talks about it, right? But um, that was the different circumstances, right? It was um, a readiness for him a preparedness for him, whatever the case may be. I don't know what his process was like that week. I don't know if he, he fully grasped the concepts, but, you know, I do know Jared, that wants, that's not the only person that can watch that tape. And if everybody can repeat that, they would. And if it was that easy to do, then we'd all do it. You know, there are certain things that you want to go exploit on everybody you play if you have the opportunity to. But Jared has grown a lot, man, and he's grown a bunch. And I don't even know him personally, but I can just watch him on tape and see that he knows uh, what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. It's the second part of his question. Yes. <laughs> in terms of handling, you've been through this coaching stuff a few times. So yes. has your process changed? Are you are you handling it different now than you did maybe the first few times you were going through it in terms of being able to put it aside and not, you know, worry about it or be concerned about it? I was really thinking about this question, Gary, because one time I got it and I was not in the playoffs. Um, probably the first time I got it, being uh, the Denver interview and when I got the 2009, right? So that would be a whole different deal. To say I wasn't thinking about it when I got the offer then would not be telling the truth. Um, but the times that I have been in the playoffs, it's, it's been handled the same way. Because being in the playoffs and getting to this moment, we got so much respect from, this, from the NFL, the shield, that everybody knows that that is first and foremost on your mind. And I think it's respected and regarded at a high level when it comes to that. Okay, guys. <laughs>